All right, well, let's talk suturing. So suturing, this video is gonna be on simple interrupted sutures, which are the, the most basic kind of suture, the ones that most people think of when they think of sutures. First, I'm just gonna cover the basic equipment you need for sewing. First of all, you need needle drivers. Needle drivers come in several sizes, small and large, personal preference. I generally use a smaller needle driver for the smaller needles, 5.0 and smaller thread and a larger needle driver for larger needles, usually found on 4.0, 3.0, which is gonna be the, the bigger size needles, the bigger size thread. So, needle drivers, you need a pair of hemostats, which are good for getting in, separating tissue, clamping off vessels, uh, lots of uses for hemostats. Some tissue forceps or pickups. These have teeth on the end, usually there's a two tooth side and a one tooth side and they will go into each other kind of like that. Now one thing to note with tissue forceps, you want to try, and this is true in general, you want to try not to crush the tissue. So if you're going to grab these, you want to try, if this, if my finger is the wound edge, you don't want to grab it with both edge and crush this, the, the skin edge because that's going to cause damage to the tissue. Ideally if you can get in and just pick it up with the bottom end of it, that's going to be a lot a lot kinder to the tissue. A pair of scissors, some iris scissors. These are what these happen to be. They're curved. They're good for getting in, trimming some simple tissue. That's something you don't really need a scalpel for. Also trimming the suture. Plenty of uses for those. You need something to anesthetize the wound. Uh, you need a syringe and a needle, and then some anesthetic, some lidocaine or marcaine. Today we're using water because uh, we are going to be pretty numb already. Um, but uh, needle size, usually you want to do as small of a needle as you can possibly do because that'll, be cause, that'll cause less discomfort to the patient. So 27 gauge, 30 gauge, depending on the body part, usually on a face, I'll try and do a 30. Um, but just smaller needle you can use, that'll be less discomfort to the patient. And then you need something to sew. Today we have a trusty pig's foot. This is what a lot of people use to, to learn on in school. And so that's what we're going to use here today for uh, for this. So we're gonna start at the beginning. Uh, first you need to get it numb. So you take the needle. Now something that I do with the needle that I've learned over the years is I will bend it. So you wanna go bevel up. The bevel is the hole on the needle. It's usually angled just a little bit. And so you take it and I will bend the needle just about 10, 15 degrees. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just about that much. And the idea of that is that if the needle is straight, and you have your laceration right here. Here's the laceration. If the needle is straight, you know, you don't want to go poking at the laceration this way. That's not effective. It's, it's going to cause a lot more pain to the patient. You want to go from the inside of the wound. And as much this, as this scares the death out of patients, scares patients to death, because it's, oh my God, you're going to go inside the cut? Well, yeah, it's, it's actually about half as painful is what the studies say. So I would usually bend the needle just a little bit and by doing that, you can get on the inside there and run it along the laceration, injecting as you go from the inside and it will cause a lot less discomfort to the patient and it will be a lot easier on you doing it because it's a lot easier to get that needle in there. Works very well. I've just kind of picked that technique up, up over the years of, uh, of doing it. So once the patient is numb, sometimes, especially on an anxious patient, I'll take the needle and, hey, are you numb? Can you feel this? Just to make sure that they're, uh, that they're good to go from that standpoint. All right, so sewing. So now you need some thread. The type of thread will obviously depend on the body part you're doing. Today we're going to use some 5.0 proline. So for this, I will generally use the small needle driver. Now, here's a tip about holding the needle. So you can see here, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the needle, you can see here, pretty far back. Now, if you hold a needle, especially a smaller needle, like a 5.0 or a 6.0 needle, if you hold it that far back, that needle is going to bend. And once the needle bends, you are done for, and there's no turning back, you just need to go get more thread. I learned that the hard way as a student. If you can pick that up early, that will save you a lot of time and hassle. So you want to grasp the needle about a third of the way down the needle. 
and that will give you just enough to where you can put it through and it's going to be a lot less likely for the needle to bend. Here's a tip on holding the needle driver. The needle driver has finger holes here. Those are not for putting your fingers in despite the name finger holes if that's what they're called. Um, what they are for, they're for loading it and unloading it. It's fine to put your fingers through there. Otherwise, when you're doing the actual sewing, the way you want to hold it, put your finger in here, put your index finger up on the pivot point here, and then you just palm it. Just wrap the rest of your fingers around it because the idea is that when you're putting it through, you're going to do this wrist flip motion. And it is a lot easier to do if you're holding it like this as opposed to if you have your fingers through the hole here and you're trying to flip it. It's just Trust me, it's a lot easier to do. So that is the proper way to hold a needle driver when, uh, when you're sewing. So let's have at it. So simple interrupted sutures. So with these, you're gonna start on one side of the wound. Now you want the needle to go in at 90 degrees. Not, I mean it's this way, but I'm just showing you so you can see it. So you want the needle to go in 90 degrees to the skin edge, perpendicular to the skin edge, and then you're just gonna take your wrist and you're gonna flip it around. 90 degrees, in, little wrist flip, and it comes out the other side. Push it through, then you just pull it most of the way through, leave a little bit of a tail. Now tying the knot. Tying the knot, knots are a series of throws. The first knot is going to be two throws and the then you're going to do a total of about five knots. The second four knots, knots two through five, are gonna be one throw. So the way a throw works, a throw is just basically a wrap around the needle driver. So you take it, you put the needle driver in the middle and you wrap once and twice. That's two throws. You then grab the other end, that tail that's sticking out there, and you just simply pull the suture off the end of the needle driver and you're gonna tighten it down. Now if you can see, let me loosen this up a little bit so you can get a little better look at it. As you're tightening this down, you want to have a nice, straight, flat knot here. Sometimes when you're tightening it down, depending on the angle, you can get some crooked knot like this. That's not going to sit flat. It's not going to lie flat. It's just not going to do well. So you want to have a nice, flat, even knot. Cinch it down. It doesn't have to be super tight. Pretty much you just need to get the skin edges together and the body will take care of the rest. So there's the first knot, two throws, and then the second time you're going to go one throw. So one wrap around and pull it through. Now each time you do a knot you want to go in opposite direction. So the first time if you went around it from the left side of the needle driver, the second time you want to go around it from the right side. And so here we go. So this is the third knot. Wrapping around this way. Cinch it down. Coming from the other side. Other side, just alternating. And again, you're going to do that about four or five times. And then after you're done, you can see here's the, the laceration, the wound edge. You don't want to have that knot right over the wound edge because it's going to cause irritation. So just simply take it, tug it over the side. Very easy. Take your iris scissors, trim off the wound edges. Leave a little bit of a tail so that you can, uh, when you or someone else goes to take the sutures out, you can get to a little bit easier. If there's no tail, sometimes it's harder to uh, to get to it and pull that knot up. So let's do another one. In at 90 degrees. Flip it around. Out the other side. And pull it through. Leave a little bit of a tail. So two throws. One, two, two throws, two wraps around. Grab that other side pull it flat. And then wrap in the opposite direction. One throw, pull it through. Opposite direction, one throw, pull it through. I'm going to do that about four or five times. Pull the knot over to the side of the wound. Trim off the edges. Very simple to do. So now when do you want to use a simple interrupted suture versus a running suture or a mattress suture or any of the other types of sutures? If you're just going to put in a few sutures, like two or three, this is probably the way to go. It's, it's quick. It's not going to take a long time. 
Another time is if you have a wound that you think might get infected. Sometimes if you have an infected wound or a wound with an abscess, you'll end up taking one stitch out to let some of the, uh, let some of the drainage out and you can't take one stitch out with a running suture. So another good place there. A lot of times when you're, when you're just starting, these are a lot easier to do. People are a lot more comfortable doing them. One, two wraps, pull it through, lie, lie the, the knot flat, single throws. And then once you get into it, you get a little bit of a rhythm going. Here's another tip. When you're holding the, the you have all this extra stuff here, Try and hold it down close because it's going to make it a lot easier to work with. If you're holding it way out here, if you've got all this extra stuff here, when you're trying to do the wrapping, it, it just it becomes it's too hard to work with. So hold it relatively down close and it's a lot easier to work with. And like I said, once you get into it, you get a little rhythm going and you can actually do it fairly quickly. So there you go, very simple, hence the name, Simple Interrupted Sutures, very easy to do.